Director, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Calimera. Buongiorno. Bonjour. You are a multilingual audience. Unfortunately, I don't know Japanese, though. Uh, my name is Andrea Serafil. I am one of the conference organizers, and I am delighted to welcome you to Cyprus and to the University of Cyprus, one of the finest newborn academic institutions on the planet. Now, I have to tell you that I read this line on the website of the University of Cyprus, so modest we are. I would like to thank you for being here today, and I would like to extend a special welcome to our keynote speaker, Professor Michael Gagarin. Here he is, with a big smile on his face, and this is Gagarin Way, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Gagarin is one of the leading authorities on Greek law and rhetoric. It is our great pleasure and our great privilege to have him here with us as the keynote speaker at this conference. I would also like to welcome our uh, distinguished international delegates, especially as it is the first time some of you have had the opportunity to visit Cyprus. I do also hope, ladies and gentlemen, that you will enjoy this conference, which aims to discuss the art of persuasion across genres and time periods. During the three days of this conference, we will examine the generic conventions, principles, results, and techniques of persuasion in Greek and Roman oratory, in historiography, in literary and prose genres, as well as in contemporary political discourse. One of the most important contributions of this conference is its aim to show that the past really matters. Although what we know today as the art of public speaking has undergone much change since the days of Pericles, Demosthenes, and Cicero, it is nevertheless clear that Greco-Roman rhetoric has influenced how contemporary politics is articulated. This conference seeks, among other things, to examine whether elements of ancient rhetoric can be detected in modern political speeches, giving the citizens of Europe and of the world the opportunity to understand the ways in which politicians seek to persuade, and in some cases also to manipulate or deceive them. If you have had a chance to look through the program, you will have seen that this conference creates a forum for the dynamic discussion by some of the most eminent scholars in classics, philosophy, communication, and rhetoric of a wide range of issues related to persuasion. And I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that I will be asking for an autograph from many of our distinguished delegates whom I have wanted to meet for a long time. I would like, at this point, to thank everyone who has supported this conference. First and foremost, the Department of Social and Political Science at the University of Cyprus, which is hosting this conference and is covering the greatest part of our expenses. I can hardly imagine where this conference will have ended up without their generous support. I would also like to thank the Department of Classical Studies and Philosophy, especially its head, Associate Professor Antoni Tsakmakis, and the Department of Classics at the University of Athens for their kind financial support. Special thanks go to the other two conference organizers, Professor Kyriakos Dimitriou and Associate Professor Sofia Papayuano. Please join me in giving them a round of applause. Their unwavering support, their professionalism and tireless effort have been instrumental in making this conference happen. I also owe many thanks to the staff and the students of the University of Cyprus and the Open University of Cyprus, namely Professor Stefanos Efnimiadis, Open University of Cyprus, Marina Harilau, the Secretary of the Department of uh, Classical Studies and Philosophy, Miria Tanu, the Secretary of the Department of Modern Greek and Byzantine Studies, Petros Luca, the IT person, and the students Maria Kithreotu, Anastasia Antoniadou, Aristophanes Aristophanos, Rafael Karalambos, and Marcos Polidoru. And of course, Eli Costantinos, our past catering manager, the person responsible for coffee, tea breaks, and lunch over the next couple of days. These people were working hard behind the scenes to carry out the tough job of uh, preparing all the conference materials and helping us to sort out a couple of practical matters. 
So much for the welcome. The other thing I would like to cover now is a bit of housekeeping. If you have time to look through your folder, you'll see that there is a map of the university campus and instructions about how to get to the conference venue from Semeli Hotel, which is the main conference hotel. For tea, coffee, breaks, and lunch, over the next couple of days, we will simply go out of this room. Weather in Cyprus around this time is very, very good, and you may all want to enjoy sunshine in a lovely place. Dinner this evening will take place at a local restaurant named Evohia, just 10 minutes walk from the conference venue. The student helpers can give directions as to how to get there. Dinner tomorrow will take place in Semeli Hotel. All the conference delegates are welcome to attend these two dinners. The cost of the first dinner is 11 euros and the cost of the second is 18. If you are giving uh, a, a paper and have not made copies of any handouts you are planning to use, we can make those uh, handouts for you. Please, uh, we can make those copies for you. Please let me know as soon as possible and I will make sure that copies will be available on time. Most people would like to have internet access and we can provide that. Wi-Fi is available in this university campus and you can find instructions in your folder about how to connect and use the Wi-Fi service. With a reference to the conference itself, I have to say that the program, as you can see, is very tight and all the delegates need to stick to the 20 plus 10 scheme of time allotment. So the chairs of panels need to let the speakers know when approaching the time limit and the speakers should watch their clock. The last thing I would like to mention is with reference to filming. You may notice that there is a camera in this room. Hello, ma'am. We would like to enhance knowledge to people outside the University of Cyprus, so we decided to fill the proceedings of this conference and make them available to the public on the University of Cyprus website. If some people have any reservations about being filmed, we will not publish their recorded speech online. So please let us know if you have any concerns about filming. That is all about housekeeping matters. I would like once again to thank you for coming here today and I look forward to a stimulating discussion in the next couple of days. Thank you very much. I would like now to ask Professor Kostantinos Christofidis, the rector of the University of Cyprus, to address the audience. Mr. Rector, the floor is yours. Good morning. Distinguished delegates, dear colleagues and students, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, it's true that the University of Cyprus is going to be the first university on the planet to be independent on solar electricity in a few months. So this is, this, is, this is true. So I'm delighted to welcome you today to the University of Cyprus for this important occasion. Before I go any further, I would like to thank my colleagues, Professor Kiriakos Dimitriou, Associate Professor Sofia Babayuanu, and Dr. Andrea Serafim for all of their efforts in organizing what we hope will be stimulating and successful conference. Most importantly, I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of the University of Cyprus. It is a great honor to host so many important specialists in classic and rhetoric from all over the world, and I do hope that you will enjoy your time here. It is also our great privilege to have Michael Gangari Emeritus Professor of Classic at the University of Texas at Austin as the keynote speaker. Somebody told me that the next keynote speaker, Kiriakos, has to be Mr. Tsipras. Eh? <laughs> and um, Professor Gagari is one of the leading authorities on Greek law and rhetoric. With a large number of participants and a rich program of scholarly presentation on a variety of topics, I am sure that this conference will be a memorable event. I strongly believe that this conference will help all of us who will be frequently in this room for the next three days better understand the techniques, purposes, and results of persuasion, the Greek pitho, not only in Greek and Roman oratory, historiography, and other genres, but also and perhaps more importantly in contemporary political discourse. Persuasion is the result of a process 
whereby one succeeds in convincing another that one's opinion or one's assessment of a particular situation is credible and acceptable, being based on knowledge of related circumstances, objective and prejudiced assessment, good judgment, and clear decisions. Persuasion is anywhere, and its power is of extraordinary critical importance in today's world. Nearly every human encounter, from everyday situation to important political decision making, includes an attempt to gain influence or to persuade others to our way of thinking. In the ancient world, the ability to persuade carried, carried with it great social prestige. The ancient Greeks and Romans knew this very well, and for them, the study of persuasion became both a discipline and an art. The speeches and treatises of the orators, rhetoricians and philosophers of Greeks and Rome, the topic of the conference that begins today, have become the stepping stone for the definition, study, and practice of persuasion across the centuries. The University of Cyprus is delighted to have been given the opportunity to host this conference, which underlines the excellent research taking place in both the hosting Department of Social and Political Science and the Department of Classical Studies and Philosophy. All the conference organizers who are one way or another connected with our university, the staff and students of the University of Cyprus who take part in this conference are representatives of the important jobs we are doing here. So to all of you, thank you for coming. Welcome to the, to the University of Cyprus. Welcome to Cyprus and enjoy the conference. And of course, I, have, I, I believe you have to include in the, in the program a, a visit to our archaeological museum. It's a very beautiful museum with uh, beautiful artifacts, and I think it's, it's really it's important. It's going to be. I mean, you have to visit it. Thank you very much. Thank you to be here. I would like now to ask Professor Kiyakos Dimitriou to address the audience. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, dear rector, colleagues, friends. Dear students, are any students around? I'm delighted. <laughs> I'm delighted to welcome you to the first international conference addressing matters in context, the art of persuasion across genres and times. This great event would have never been realized without the impeccable energy, diligence, and perseverance of Andreas Serafim, who has been the mastermind and architect behind the scenes. For his excellent work, I extend to him my gratitude, as well as to Professor Sofia Babayoanu, whose personal involvement in the project, advice, and support have been invaluable. The program of this conference reveals the countless manifestations of the so-called art of persuasion throughout history of speech, knowledge, opinion, and reality. In ancient Greece, persuasion is inextricably linked to logos as suggestive of what we may recognize as effective speech or rhetorical persuasion. The sophist Gorgias, in his Engomium to Helen, refers to logos as a powerful master. What is implied is that even if knowledge of being is conceivable, which the Sophie seems to contest, that knowledge cannot be disclosed without being distorted by the chasm between substances and our apprehension and communication and communicating them, communication of them. Logos here implicating reasoning about truth, evoking the conceptual duality of logos as reason and logos as speech, appears to be constitutive of the omnipotence of rhetorical expertise and thus persuasive rhetoric. Hence, our grasp of reality, if there is such a thing as reality, is everlastingly mediated by discursive interpretations 
but most importantly, mirrored by rhetorical persuasion in as long, long as humans are always inclined towards impressionistic accounts of reality, mentally submerged by an illusion of certainty imparted by the spoken word. Here is what Gorkia says about Logos as persuasive speech, and I quote, the effect of Logos upon the condition of the soul is comparable to the power of drugs over the nature of bodies. For just as different drugs dispel different secretions from the body, and some bring an end to disease and others to life, so also in the case of Logoi, some distress, others delight, some cause fear, others make hearers bold, and some drag and bewitch the soul with a kind of evil persuasion. Persuasion, according to Gorgias, is tantamount to molding a false or truthful logos, whereas other forms of political power require some kind of force Logos makes people its willing slave. This is exactly what Plato says in the Gorgias, in his portrayal or depiction of the red reader, and in his analysis of the relation between persuasive speech, knowledge, opinion, and reality. Reality as logos or reason truth. Is the art of rhetoric demystified in the Platonic Gorgias? Absolutely not. There is still a profound mystique in the Protagorean relativistic man-measure formula. Since truth, or whatever can be so denominated, is largely internal to or conditioned by individual subjectivity. Protagoras' notion that judgment and knowledge are relative to the person judging or knowing is one of the foundational assumptions in intellectual history, deeply rooted in the history of ideas and political action. Apart from being discussed widely in contemporary philosophy, Protagoras' emphasis on how human subjectivity determines the way we understand things is at the same time essentially in defense of the art of rhetoric and the art of persuasion as a process of constructing our world and communicating our visions and ideas to our social environment. In Aristotelian terms, rhetoric may be defined as the faculty of observing, in any given case, the available means, means of persuasion. This is not a function of any other art. All things considered, this is an exciting conference based on a lively, brilliant idea that runs across time, cultures, literature, science, and philosophy. I'm sure it's going to be a great success, something we would be happy to repeat in the near future. Special thanks go to Professor Michael Gagarin, who has kindly accepted our invitation to deliver the keynote lecture tonight, entitled the Greek art of persuasion and its influence, and to my department, the Department of Social and Political Science, and particularly the chairperson, Professor Costas Constantino, who has embraced uh, the idea with enthusiasm and supported morally, financially, its implementation. Finally, I wish you all a pleasant stay. The program looks pretty heavy, nevertheless, hopefully you could have the chance to visit a few interesting sites on the island, which being at the crossroads of many civilizations and empires, is a heated place with many archeological and cultural attractions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kyriakos. Uh, I would like now to ask the chair and the members of the first panel to take their seats on stage and let this conference begin.